Hi, and welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. My name is Ross Benjamin of rbwins.com. It is Thursday, February 9th. It's our NBA betting edition. And like always, I am joined by Mr. Doug Upstone of DocSports.com, one of the finest handicappers you'll find anywhere, folks. One of my favorites, that's for sure. Uh, Doug, how are you, my friend? I, I'm doing well. Hey, just there's a lot of excitement in this town right now, right? I mean, yeah. got the Super Bowl. I, in fact, uh, I just talked to somebody that just got in the airport and they said, what a nightmare that is. And so that was crazy. Uh, so that's the, all those festivities. The golf started today, you know, with the uh, the always popular Phoenix Open and, uh, you know, a lot of people in town to see. To, you know, to do that as well. So, and excuse me, it's going to be a wild weekend here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be a participant in some of it. Yeah. How so, about the, I mean, speaking in the NBA, how about the Phoenix Suns? Uh, oh, my goodness. Acquiring huh? Kevin Durant for me. I mean, the, the from, new owner just took over what, uh, Monday? Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And pulled the trigger on a, on a big deal to trying, you know, to try, I guess, try and win it now, even though they've had a you know pretty lousy season. Now, injuries certainly have been a part of that. But, you know, maybe if they get, you know, completely healthy and, uh, you know, the other thing, too, that Jay Crowder thing never made any sense to me. Now I see he just went to the Bucks. Yeah, uh, which is a- to me, that's an underrated trade. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't. He held out. Right, Doug, you know the situation better. Than yeah, anybody. yeah. He, well, it was both a holdout and also the the you know, and the stubbornness of the Suns at the same time. So, I mean, it's just, it was a weird deal. Let's put it that way. I mean, to to go to what, uh, 50 some games into the season that you don't play a guy because of a contract dispute. I don't know. So there's, there's obviously more to it than, you know, than what was uh, a a little bit of vindictiveness on uh, management's part. It Uh, it seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and not to hold, uh, the player not accountable but uh, right. the bottom line is is he was holding out for more money and they they had a signed contract and they said look you know you're you want to hold out hold out as long as they made him sit for 57 games and at the trade deadline uh he pretty much uh came out smelling like a rose going to milwaukee um and you know say what you will about trey crowder and the um the holdout but the guy is a proven player at playoff time. You know, he, right. he's been an instrumental part in a lot of team success in the postseason in recent years, Doug. Yeah, he, he I mean, and the other thing that he does and uh, he brings that toughness too. and, you know, yeah. not to say the Bucks aren't, you know, aren't, aren't, you know, aren't a tough team. But when they won it two years ago and it, the name, the guys, I, I'm drawing a blank on the guy that they had, uh, they got from Houston and uh, who was a, you know, kind of the uh, Crowder type player, a forward that can defend and he br- did the same thing for them and yeah. you know he moved he moved on right away but i mean so in terms of a fit that's a real good fit for milwaukee but in, in terms of phoenix uh i you know you mentioned you know with durant and whatever and everybody can have whatever their opinions are on him at this time of his career uh but uh better certainly or odds makers certainly liked the phoenix chances because they went all the way to the second best betting odds now to win the nba title so that's yeah. uh, that's of interest. Well, the West was wide open to start with, right, right. Doug? I mean, you know, and now, uh, look, we know Phoenix is, they've been hovering around 500 of late, and they're so much better than that when they're healthy. Um, of course, they were missing Jay Crowder. He was an integral part of their success in recent years, uh, last year anyway. Uh, Devin Booker uh, has been out for quite a while, too, and he's scheduled to come back. Uh, so adding Booker into the mix along with um, Kevin Durant certainly is a viable uh, <laughs> viable team to contend with. And, you know, Chris Paul hasn't won an NBA championship yet. Uh, the Suns uh, want to win an NBA championship. They came close. So uh, give, give management credit. They held out with Crowder. Uh, they, they sent him away to Milwaukee and they bring in, uh, Kevin Durant, and um, you know, and they lose Mikel Bridges. That's a little bit of a loss, but uh, the trade off with him and uh, Kevin Durant is of a lopsided var- variety right now, anyway, at this stage of their career. 
Yeah, uh, and the interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, it, go ahead. I, I was going to move on to a different topic. Oh, okay, so, I'll, yeah. I'll just say that you know, and the other thing too is the Suns. There had been talk for probably more than a month that they were looking to move Bridges for the right deal, anyways. Yeah. You know, even though he's a good player, uh, lo looking to do that. So you know, there's there's some different things involved here. You know, whether it can all come together. Well, now we'll find out. You know, from that standpoint, and you know, and you know, like one of the games I'm going to be talking about, it has to do with the uh, Memphis Grizzlies, and you know, they're a puzzle, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. as to yeah. what's going on with them. So, yeah, so I mean, it's just so hey, you know, it's it's fun though when you have all these trades and all these things. I have one question for you though. Sure. Uh, speaking of, speaking of moving on, do you think that in in these types of trades, other than a top five pick, do you think? Grading draft picks really matters. Uh, I don't think the emphasis on first and second round picks in the NBA is anywhere near what it is in the NFL, for example. Right. So to answer your question, uh, no, because uh, I, I don't think it's as impactful uh, as you may think. Uh, again, a lot of times you're you're trading. Um, you're receiving when you give away high draft picks, namely first rounders, you're receiving a pretty good player in return. So I think a lot of the NBA executives, especially those on that are running teams that are winning in our playoff caliber teams, aren't worried about giving up that first round pick next year or the year after. A lot of times it's protected beside, which means if it's a number uh, 10 or less pick, it goes to the following year or whatever the case may be. Uh, no, Doug, I, I don't think it, it does because you're looking at a 12-team roster. You're not looking at like a 53-man roster in the NFL. Uh, so, you know, missing one first-round pick, you, you very rarely see a team that's out of playoff contention or is in line for a top 10 pick the following year uh, trading that pick away. It's always teams that are relatively at the top of the heap, for lack of a better phrase, or serious playoff contenders. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, it does. And, and I agree with you, you know, on that. It just, it, you know, when you see these draft picks and, you know, I mean, maybe something comes of it sometime, but yeah. There, there's very few instances where you'd say, boy, you know, they made this pick and this is the outcome of it. Boy, did this team get hosed or boy, did this team do extremely well? It just it just doesn't seem to happen often. No, no. Um, you know, and in stockpiling first round draft choices for teams that are have been out of contention, have been out of for all intent and purposes, have been out of playoff contention since uh, early November, you know, um, <laughs> when the season started, that's maybe? the way to build. Okay. But when, yeah, when the season starts, yeah, I was going to go there next, but <laughs> in any event, um, who is the top, uh, right now, I, again, I don't follow futures odds that much. Uh, you said that Phoenix, uh, escalated up to number two to win the NBA championship or the West? No, the, the NBA championship behind wow. Boston. Wow. Yep. Behind I, Boston, now. I could tell you right now. I don't know what Milwaukee is, but I, I, I would put my money on Milwaukee right now. Yeah, well, we just talked about that Monday, you know. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, the the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks are starting to come together. Um, you know, they also are getting healthier, getting all the pieces, and now they just add seemingly an important piece, you know, yeah. for them. You know, from that standpoint, and because uh, with uh, Abaka, he he, you know, he's been injured the whole time, so moving him on is is a complete non loss, and so yeah, so I I think that they, uh, you know, I think they helped themselves, and now we just go on from there. You know, like you said, fifty seven some games. We're looking at about twenty five games left in the regular season. Now it's go time for the for those that are really you know that yeah. have a chance to to make it. Yeah, in Milwaukee, uh, like you alluded to. Um, you know, when they had that championship run a couple of years back, uh, people, they get a lot of notoriety for their offensive explosiveness, uh, and rightfully so. But during that championship run, especially during the postseason, they they were they really locked down defensively. And they're a very underrated defensive team, and Jay Crowder is not going to hurt uh, that aspect of their game whatsoever. <laughs> no. So, no. And he could score. You know what I mean? Right. He, oh, yeah. He's a 14, 15 point a night guy yep. that plays terrific defense. So 
Uh, my my money's on Milwaukee right now. That's that's where I would go. Is that what you said earlier in the week, Doug? Yes, that's correct. Yes, yeah. I, so I, I agree, agree with you. On that. Yeah, I think yeah, uh, so that, we should put our money I'm together. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Kyrie Irving. Uh, last topic on trades. He goes to Dallas, the toxic one. Um, he's usually good and well behaved for the first six months or so he's with the team. So Dallas shouldn't fret in that regard. Uh, made his debut last night. He scored. He scored twenty four points. Dallas gets a win on the road at the Clippers, and they they did that again without Luka Doncic, who is scheduled to come back, I believe, over the weekend. I'm not positive on that, but you know that creates a very formidable backcourt. We talked about this earlier in the week, and the more I've had time to digest this, um, uh, that makes Dallas a viable contender. In the West, you never know because, as we said, it's wide open. But, um, again, I, I question the trade from this aspect. You gave up uh, some assets to get him, and he's a free agent at the end of the season, Doug, you know? Yeah, they must think they can sign him. I mean, yeah. you, otherwise, I don't know why you'd make that trade because it's not like he's a over-the-top player, okay? Yeah. Does he make him better? Yes, okay, but yeah. – the, the the thing I wonder, and this, and you know, it, it'll just have to play out. And if you, and if it if it's supposed to work, I guess it will. But I mean, I don't see Kyrie Irving changing his game, okay. And and when he was asked to change his game in Boston, all he did was complain, okay. Yeah. I can use a couple other words in there to go over yeah. in front of it, but but anyways, that's what you know, it's, it's all he did. And he basically did the same thing when he went to the Nets. Okay. He wanted to be the, be the lead guy. And all of a sudden they brought in other, other players and he wasn't the lead guy. So it, he's not going to change. So does Luca change his game? Cause yeah. I think he's going to have to, um, yeah. cause I mean, they're, they're going to have to play together. Okay. Yeah. At various points, even though I think part of the, the reason behind it is to give Luca maybe a little more rest and then having, you know, have a viable option coming in. But I mean, he's, you know, there's no way that Irving's going to just come off the bench exclusively. Yeah. So that's that's an interesting dynamic. And and Luca likes the ball in his hands. Um, so, but so does Irving. I yeah, will I see. Guess, I guess uh, I, off the top of my head, um, Luca is going to be the point guard. You know, I, Kyrie to me is going to be a number two guard, yeah, much to his chagrin probably, but. Uh, he had to realize that going in and he's got to reset his attitude. Uh, and then, like you said, um, instead of bringing in a backup point guard uh, off the bench, uh, you use Kyrie as the point guard to give Luca a rest. And then when Luca sits down, you bring Kyrie in to be the point guard and down a stretch, you have them both on the floor. I yeah. mean, that, that would be my thinking, but again, um, I see it as a potential problem. If it's more long-term Doug, than in the short term, meaning from now to the end of the season. Yeah, it's just it, the other thing, too, is that the uh, one thing that won't happen is Dallas, um, I, I, their front court players, they, they better have some uh, be able to do some good rim protection because that is not an all world defensive backcourt. I can yeah. assure you of that, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, that uh, there's a little bit lacking there. The quickness yeah. and otherwise, yes. Yeah, Dallas. Uh, Dallas usually plays with no regards to defense. They just try to outscore you. And be honest with you, they're one of the more entertaining teams to watch in the NBA as a result. But uh, you have to lock down a little bit defensively during the playoffs. Um, we'll see. They made a deep run a couple years back, uh, yep. and you always have a chance with those two guards in the lineup. That's for sure, Luca has proven that he could take a team deep in the playoffs and carry him on their, on his back. Uh, so now with a little bit of supporting cast, meaning Kyrie Irvin in terms of star power, we'll see. It's an interesting dynamic that I want to see what develops. So Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be fun. No question. All right. So the NBA today, Doug, uh, we ran into a little bit of a jam. We were supposed to record about an hour ago. And folks, to be quite frank with you, I schedule our games uh, – Sunday night or Monday morning for the whole week and totally forgot as an oversight that it was the NBA trade deadline. I'm being brutally transparent with you. As a result, um, uh, we have two games today, uh, Doug's game and my game, that uh, didn't have lines 
before we went on the air. So we're going to do our best to project a line. Uh, Doug did the same thing I did, go to Sagarin and uh, figure out a line according to what Sagarin is saying. And like I alluded to, unless I've not been made aware of anything different uh, in my game, the Knicks in Philly anyway, um, there has been no significant trade that would cause the line to be delayed. Uh, again, we went on air just as the NBA trade deadline expired. So that's yet to be seen. But Doug, uh, tell the folks a little bit about what you're going to cover and what you've researched and found out in that regard. Well, I'm talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves at the Memphis Grizzlies uh, in this one. And, uh, you know, the, the Minnesota, you know, last month, at the end of last month, they had a three-game winning streak, Ross. And since then, in their last six games, they've alternated wins and losses. Um, the last one was a massive blowout at Utah on Wednesday, beat them by 25 points. Uh, so that was that was interesting. Now, Timberwolves are currently eighth in the Western Conference, and they sent uh, D'Angelo Russell back to the Lakers, okay, in a three-way deal, and they got Mike Conley, 35-year-old Mike Conley, by the way, yeah. uh, in, a, in, in part of that trade. Now, I'm not sure what that does if, either way, okay? I look at Minnesota, they're 10th in scoring and they're 19th in points allowed. I don't see get what Conley's going to do there either way. And right. and the same, you know, with losing, losing Russell. Now, Memphis, Ross, complete mystery to me about this team, okay? They won 11 in a row. All right. I mean, they 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 were the best team in the NBA during that stretch, unquestionably. And this team has had a lot of injuries over the last two to two and a half years. OK, different guys and, and key guys like Morant's been out, you know, they're, they're, Jackson's been out, but a bunch of guys. But then they have recently they've lost nine out of 11 and they're three and eight against spread. It, you know, the breakdowns primarily have been on the road. OK, that's that's been their weakness, which which was not a, their weakness the last couple of years. But the, at home, they are 22 and five and 17 and 10 at, at FedEx Forum. But of their five losses, two of them have come this month at home. Yeah. So it's just it's just a it's a baffling situation about this team, you know, as, as to what and I could go on for half an hour trying to you know figure out why. But I don't have the exact answer. But you mentioned, you know, looking at trying to figure power ratings. You know, we mentioned mentioned Sagrin. I got my own as well that I use. And I got Memphis either minus five or minus five and a half by the power ratings. OK, with the home with the home court advantage. I think because of the record, it's probably going to be either five and a half or six. Okay, playing at home, I think it's going to be bumped up a little bit because of that. Uh, these teams just met two weeks ago, as it's as it turns out, in the land of ten thousand frozen lakes. Currently in February, uh, yeah. from that standpoint, and Minnesota with Memphis one ten to one hundred as three point home underdogs. So from Memphis' perspective, relatively short revenge factor. Okay, just two weeks. Uh, but with these two teams a little bit scattered in terms of how they're playing, I'm going to side with the Grizz on this one. And I'm going to do it primarily because of this, not only because they are 22 and five at home with a decent ATS record, but also when they've been a home favorite this year, which I believe I, I forget the exact number to tell you the truth, but they've won those all their home games as a favorite by 10.7 points per game. So based off my line is accurate. I think Memphis comes in with the revenge factor and gets it done based on their history this season. Uh, in Memphis, you're going to take in your projected line was I'm going to go five and a half, five and a half or six. Let's, okay. let's just put it so out of that. Memphis minus five and a half or six at home against Minnesota. Remember folks, we are taping right now as we speak, it is 4 40 PM Eastern time. These games don't go until Friday evening. Uh, the 10th we're recording on the 9th. So Keep that in mind when you view the videos, because uh, more than any other day we've done them, these lines are subject to change. But I agree. I mean, Minnesota is another one. If you're a Timberwolves fan, uh, you got to be pulling your hair out because of the inconsistency of this team. They look like one of the better teams or at least a top four team in the West on some nights, and then other nights they can't beat a team that's 10 or 15 games below 500 at home. Uh, Memphis, on the other hand, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, confusing as to why what, they've slumped lately. And uh, you've touched upon they have been hit with some injuries, 
but by the same token, uh, the disparity of their play, level of play over the last three weeks or so compared to where it was beforehand, even accounting for those injuries uh, is a bit concerning. But again, it's only February. They have plenty of time to turn it around. In any event, let me look at this game. The Philadelphia uh, 76ers will be hosting the New York Knicks. And uh, these teams just played last Sunday night in New York. And that line at that time, or at the closing line, uh, was Philadelphia was a four and a half point road favorite. Now, you would tend to think that the line should be around 10 or 11 in this game, just based on that. But uh, I made an adjustment here. Sagarin shows me a line that should be between six and seven. And I, I think a reason for that, too, uh, while why it will be somewhere in the neighborhood of that uh, line or point spread uh, is the fact the Knicks are much better and have been much better on the road than at home this year, Doug. I mean, um, I, I, at home, they're 12 and 13 or one game under 500. What I might be wrong on a specific record, but it is one game under 500. On the road, they've gone 16 and 11 straight up. And they've also won 12 of their last 17 games on the road. Uh, Philadelphia coming off back-to-back -back losses. Both of those were on the road at New York. And uh, the thing with that New York game on Sunday is the Knicks overcame a 21-point deficit in that game to defeat Philadelphia. You got to love the NBA. Only in the NBA that seems to happen on a consistent basis. And then, um, you know, the uh, following game, they lose to Boston. Both times held under 100 points. They return home. Uh, this is one of the games I could see uh, Philly winning by three or four. Uh, being the better team down the stretch, uh, getting their revenge for that, blowing that big deficit. But because of the way the Knicks have played and been so competitive on the road, especially over their last 17 on the road, um, I'm going to take the points here. I'm going to say the New York Knicks plus six uh, up to seven or six or higher. How about that? I'll take the Knicks plus six or higher at Philadelphia on Friday February the 10th in Doug Upstone. Uh, he likes the um, Memphis Grizzlies uh, minus the six and uh, they're against the Minnesota Timberwolves in a game where both teams need to straighten their ass out down a stretch. So, Doug, what do you got for us uh, coming up? Uh, Super Bowl week. I'm interested to hear. Any Super Bowl props, by the way? We did a show on Super Bowl props, and I didn't have my buddy Doug on because we did it at 10 in the morning Eastern time. Okay, I'll, I'll give you one right off the top. Right. Okay, yeah. how, how about that? The sure. uh, pa Patrick Mahomes over on 0 0.5 interceptions. Right, there okay. you go. And the and the reason for that is that uh, just real quick he you know he definitely like he will take chances okay even though he's a little bit more under control with with the situation but I do note that in the last two Super Bowls that he played he has a grand total of four interceptions in those games so I'm not um, that's that's so there's a freebie I already bet it so I, I'm good to go on that and so, uh, with that that one so that's one that I have and hey Ross we're also trying to do we went three and zero on Monday by the way. Okay, yeah, with, all, yeah. with all the picks and everything else. LeBron James was yeah. a nice winner here uh, on that. And so, yeah, you mentioned the Super Bowl. Well, what I got? What do I got going? I got nine picks all together for the Super Bowl. One is a side. The other eight are uh, the are uh, prop bets uh, coming across the board. And one is a six unit bet. OK, so what my best bet for sure on the on the game for the day. So I have that going uh, NBA uh, just. Very modest, uh, but I actually took a couple days off even recently, but uh, two and oh recently, three out of the last four. So that's been good. And with hockey back, I'm smiling. 18 and 11 of late. Uh, nice. I got a seven unit best bet going tonight, as a matter of fact, for Thursday. So if anybody's interested in that, I got a nice seven unit play. And with it, uh, you also get a parlay. Okay. That's that's available there. So yeah, so lots of good stuff. And it's just, like I said, it's going to be fun. And then, like I say, if anybody's watching the golf on Saturday, there's only going to be about 220,000 people. So just look for me. My face will shine right up for you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, is it was it? Let me ask you a question. It might be a stupid one, uh, but you being from the Phoenix uh, area, was that a strategically scheduled this way so it fell on uh, 
Super See, they, it, it has it has forever. Been, I should say it, it has always been on Super Bowl Sunday since I've lived here. Okay. And the the thing that's odd though is that the when they moved the schedule back when they add last year when they added the seventeenth game or the eighteenth week uh, last year, by choice the uh, golf tournament went with it. OK, yeah. so they flipped this with with uh, another tournament to keep that same date, which is unusual to me because the least attended day, of course, is Sunday. Yeah, okay, sure. From the Nintendo stand, st- standpoint. So I would have thought they would have gone out of it, but they obviously they have the reasons for doing it. And, you know, and so yeah. I'm curious to see how much uh, uh, Chiefs and Eagles guard will be out there, because when I've gone the past, there's, <laughs> there's quite a few of them wearing those yeah. clubs. Well, you know, and the thing you you got to keep in mind too. I, I and again, uh, you could correct me if I'm wrong. Is I'm sure the network who has the rights to the golf tournament uh, is looking at the fact that there we need people look for fill time before the right. Super Bowl starts because it yep. doesn't start to six thirty Eastern time. So uh, I I think that might have a little bit to do with it. I, uh, I and, would agree, and that's why they're not concerned with the um the crowds on sunday uh as opposed to the rest of the tournament which you're right i mean uh you know uh realistically the best crowds are usually the final day of the tournament for any tournament in golf correct me from no no you're generally speaking that is correct and the other aspect of it too is because this one is such an unusual one i mean it's also the most the fourth day the sunday which is the worst day is better than 99 percent of any other tournament altogether. Yeah. Okay. So sure. it's that's from so, an attendance standpoint. Yes. From, an att- from a total attendance standpoint. Correct. There you go. So that answers a lot of questions there. And again, uh, Doug, are you still handicapping golf over at Dots? And something actually something came up. And so I'm not doing that. I'm just betting it personally this okay. year. Uh, there right. was a little switch that Docs made from that standpoint. So I'm just betting it personally. So, uh, but yeah, I, t- I had Rom uh, one of the two weeks that he won. So that was good. Not a big, huge payoff, but that was good. And, you know, so yeah, off to a decent start with that. But yeah, just it's all personal this, this time around. We'll see yeah. if I can convince him next year to change it up for me. Yeah, I'm sure a lot has to do with the fact that as opposed to other sports that we sell, uh, whether it be at docks or anywhere else, uh, PGA uh, betting or, or people who invest into sports handicappers like Doug, who know golf very, very well. He worked in the industry for years. Um you just don't get the amount of sales. So it's, oh, not- yeah, that, that, that's, I mean, that's part of it. And also, and I'll say, that, I mean, the, in truth, the other aspect of it is I like to do tournament golf as opposed to daily. Ah, and yeah. so because of it, that's another reason, you know, for it. Uh, some people like the immediate, you know, payout or immediate uh, thing of having to do that. Um, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. it's, I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, hey, I, hey, I got the XFL and the USFL to fill my time coming up, Ross. I mean, <laughs> come on. Oh, man. I don't, don't, don't go there with me. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me at rbwins.com real quickly, folks. NBA 17 and 11 since December 26th. As you can see, very selective in the NBA these days. Uh, but that is 61% over that course of time. College basketball since November 17th. I started the year, let's make it easy. I started the season one and three in college basketball. Since that time, I am 61 and 46, which is around 57%. And even with the one and three, around 56% for the year. Uh, We're not going to discuss why some people don't feel that's impressive because we beat that to death. But we both know that over a long course of time, 55 to 58 percent is a terrific win percentage. Anything more than that is just a special season. Um, and, And we both enjoyed those types of years. But we know realistically they don't come around that often. So uh, folks, you could find a guy who goes 55 to 58 percent in any sport. You're doing very, very well. And uh, there you have it. NBA going good. College basketball going good. College basketball totals specifically since March of last year, 24 and 10 with my last 34. Good for 72 percent. And uh, I did have a winner in college basketball last night as I laid the big number with the Michigan Wolverines and they easily covered. And uh, that's rbwins.com. And you can find Doug at docsports.com. Doug will be back with us on Monday when we'll be discussing more NBA or actually 
college basketball action for Tuesday. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning with uh, Jesse Shul. Uh, we'll cover um, some NBA as well. And also uh, tomorrow afternoon, I'll be back with uh, actually tomorrow morning. I'll be covering some college basketball for Friday night with Jesse Shul. I had so many videos, you lose track of what you're doing. <laughs> and then uh, Friday night, uh, Friday afternoon, around 4 p.m. Eastern, I'll be recording with Sean Higgs. We'll be looking at the Saturday co college basketball card and giving you our free picks as well. For Doug Upstone and Ross Benjamin, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Take care and God bless, folks. <laughs>